Hey guys, what's up from Roll, Minnesota, your state of skate? Hey, I'm Butch Lehman, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. Rather than view one inline skater and take a look at their sections, their profiles, we're going to take a look at a blading documentary, something that's pretty new and that I found extremely inspirational. So for those of you that have seen Vine Street or Vine Street 2, the producer Dom West is an amazing cinematographer, and for this documentary, he took a few of the best rollerbladers in the world to Burma for a cultural experience that's really quite eye-opening and I think gets at exactly what the heart of rollerblading is. So if you guys will join me in watching this one, I think this is something that's a must-see for everybody that calls themselves a skater. Anyway guys, join me for this and uh, let's take a look. So the first thing you're going to notice about this documentary is the cinematography is just breathtaking. Amazing shots, scenery shots, portrait style shots, and the, it, the production quality is just, it speaks for itself. Look at this. Dom West is an amazing cinematographer, one of the best, if not the best, in the skating industry. And I've said that before, I'll say it again, it's great stuff. The premise of this video is he took three rollerbladers, including Gavin Drum, Joe Atkinson, and Matthew Heineman, uh, to Burma to encounter some of the locals and experience some of the culture and just share in the universal acceptance of rollerblading. And it's, it's really inspirational to watch. It's really um, contemplative, reflective on maybe some of the materialism that holds our cultures back in, in the West sometimes. And it really makes you thankful for what we have as rollerbladers. The fact that I'd never been anywhere near here before was a big appeal. Something completely different. And to be able to see it through rollerblading is a unique way to experience this place and definitely affords the ability to see and learn a whole lot more than I would otherwise. You know, I couldn't agree more. I think culturally, when we talk about rollerblading, that's one of the main experiences that it gives to those that participate is those different lifestyle experiences, those opportunities to travel, that family dynamic you get with this whole group of skaters from across the globe. So I definitely feel that. I think, I think that couldn't have been said any more eloquently. I like how all these kids are just kind of chilling at the skate park. They're putting on a show. Uh, putting smiles on people's faces. And this is a really cool looking skate park too. Dave and Joe is always amazing. I love to hang out with those guys. I really have a strong connection with them. I enjoy to skate with them, but also sharing about our experience of skating. And I mean, that's really what it comes down to is it is an experience. The act of skating is an act of creation. It's a creative expression, a creative experience, where we put into motion something that originates as an idea. You know, none of these tricks start as tricks. They start as a conceptualization in the mind before they then become manifest in reality. And being able to share that with other people, I think, is what makes it special. I knew Dave came over here a long time ago, and I knew that he was skating, that's for sure, and I knew that it was a project of his to help build the scene here, but to come and actually experience it. Respect. It's, it's amazing. I gotta definitely have respect for that. Came, I didn't think skating existed in this country, but around 2012, the skate scene just exploded, and skate parks were popping up everywhere, and I thought, wow, like, this is something I can really be a part of and really help see grow and develop, so that's what's kept me here for all these years. Keep fighting the good fight, brother. That's what it's all about. And how cool is this? To get like the whole town out here watching you put on a show down, down the handrail. The love, the support, that's the camaraderie. That's what blading is ultimately, to me anyway, and I think to a number of us you in this culture. When you do the tricks, only you do the tricks. But you need the interaction with the friends you skate with or the crowd looking at you. I believe that sharing is one of the most important thing about passion. Absolutely. I mean, the community is the best part of rollerblading. And I know sometimes there's issues with the community and infighting, but 
I'll say it before, I'll say it again. I think we have one of the most accepting, dynamic communities in any action sport, really any any culture. To this that makes me really enjoy skating, and these guys have an entirely different approach to and regard nice. for what they do. That for me has been really refreshing. And honestly, I think this is what rollerblading, inline skating, whatever you want to call it, what we need more of is these opportunities where we get big name pros, people with a reputation, with the skill set to impress an impressionable audience. That was crazy, by the way. To get out there in the public spotlight and showcase rollerblading, showcase our sport, showcase our culture and our community. This switch up is dope. Man, we got fishes on lock both ways. But they're the what best spokespeople for our sport. A lot of Burmese people tell me is they feel like they have a lack of identity. They want to be unique. They want to share their style. They want to share their story. But I felt like they couldn't find an outlet. So skating has been really special for them because they can show off who they are. And they can also connect to other people around the world. Cool little wall ledge there. It's kind of amazing to me how public all of the skating is that they're doing because I know for me, like skating in public always makes me nervous. I, I don't like to perform those types of tricks that I don't know if I'm gonna land. Um, you know, a demo is a little bit different, but that was nice. This skate park looks surprisingly fun. Good usage of rail there. I'm going to go ahead and encourage all of you guys, when you're at a skate park, to interact with the locals there, especially the kids, even if they're not rollerbladers, if they're scooter kids, if they skateboard, whatever. But a good impression can go a long way in building connections with our sport or even drawing people in. I mean, I think I speak for a lot of a lot of skaters when we say how refreshing it is to see that there's interest out there, especially in other countries. Like I said, there it's giving them, giving kids an outlet away from more destructive tendencies to do something that is creative and expressive. And maybe a little bit countercultural, but without, without the sort of self-harm or destructiveness that drugs or alcohol or you know some of those other things um, bring the risk of. What a weird rail! I have to say though, this setup looks like it could be really fun. That was sweet. The flickering light too. Nice effect. I'll never take a skate park for granted ever again in my life. Look at this place. Look at that. Yeah, I mean, we have skate parks all over here in the United States, and I know I'm guilty of complaining about bad parks. We even do a series on this That's channel sketchy, called like, The Worst Skate Park Ever. It's not built too well, so. You've also got the risk factor of the object like breaking on you or some screws sticking up and there you go, like running around here without a tetanus jab. Yeah, you it's dangerous. In your shin and, and yeah, it's, it's real. I've got four stitches in there. Go ahead. Skating here is tough, man. There's not that many good street spots. You did a pretty good job really with those. At times. And it's hard because there's no skate shops here. It's really hard to get parts. Just to like hand them like a fresh pair of wheels, it was like, like the faces, they were just so juiced and we kind of just don't realize that because we just like get all this product and whatever and like there's people like who can't even access it because they can't get packages. Yeah, and those, those interactions with professionals can be a life-changing experience, so it's so important to our sport to have those opportunities for those types of meet and greets. Makes a big difference. There's a cow. 
Good cow shot. The skater's dad, he's building a skate park and he started with just a little patch of concrete and some rails and a, a kicker ramp and um, he came down for pretty much like the opening of the skate park. Look at the box of skate parts. Leftover skate, skate stuff. When I started, it was my next door neighbor's kicker out the front of his house. And that's all you need, really. If they can set it up here, you can do it anywhere. Look how cool this is. They're just like out sessioning at somebody's house, running through the through the opening of the house to get speed for the rail. And you know, it's this kind of minimalism that I think helps us appreciate skating even more, that this sort of fun and excitement can be had with nothing but a practice rail. It's crazy, the crowd's just built up and the press was there and everything and they even made a foam pit out of like sawdust. Yeah, this is super this is cool wild. You know, how many of us started skating something small or skating in a driveway or a P-rail? It doesn't really matter what you have available to you, it's can you make fun out of what you have. He like came up with a saw and stuff and tried like cutting down his house and we just had to stop him and say no it's cool, duck under, it's such a legend. That was sick. Right into the sawdust. I respect that immensely. It's a great attitude to have. deal with regards to the whole breaking branches and stuff like um, that. Is that in general with everything? Um, no, they believe that like spirits that they worship live in certain trees. That's why they like don't break their branches because the spirits that get angry or whatever. Yeah. Fucking so different. Again, the cinematography is just so beautiful in this. Amazing stuff. There's something in the culture here about a relationship to space and in particular a seeking permission for things and respecting the people who you impact. This part is really cool. Their interactions with the locals. Um, getting permission to skate, kind of embracing the cultures both ways. When you get permission from the Supreme Monk to skate the rail in the monastery, that's, I mean, how cool is that? What a story, what a legend. Hoping we can get a fish brain though. Topsail's pretty close, I could survive with that. Ooh, a gap is even better. Basically everywhere that you skate, it's not just you and your crew, you're very closely connected with a larger group of people when you skate here, which is really unique, really interesting, and I think it shapes the role it plays in their lives. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that's something we need more of in blading, just across the board. We need to make it 
a more collective experience for everyone, not just for the crews that are Usually going out when to I skate. Around for skating, it'll be self-motivated and very internal. But meeting all these guys has been a reminder of the fact that skating is entirely whatever you make of it. And the simple pleasures and values you can get from it are accessible to everyone. Couldn't have said it better. The accessibility piece is what I think is predicated with rollerblading is how do we make the culture accepting, universally accessible, and something that people want to be a part of and feel like they are a part of, even if they don't necessarily fit the mainstream definition of what we think of with rollerblading. Like, if you quad skate, we don't want to isolate those people. If you're a recreational skater, we don't want to isolate those people. And on the same vein, if you do an other form of action sport or something that's maybe photography driven, you can still have a place in the subculture that we call inline skating. That was so good. Oh, this trick. It's like a 90 degree angle change on that true spin Macchio. Don't fall in the water. That's a really high rail to jump onto too. That was like shoulder height. Again, another amazing shot. And getting it from these two different angles, perfection. Dom West is a genius behind the camera. And into that tiny bank, that was sick. I have to say though, I think the message behind this this whole documentary series, even though it's short and sweet, is something that is so relevant to rollerblading as a whole right now, to inline skating. And it's up to us, as the individuals that do it, to make that change and to embrace that philosophy. You know, we can have something special that's inclusive, that's accessible to everybody, that is more appealing to the mainstream culture. Or we can just agree to sit back in our comfort zone box and exclude everybody else and say we don't want to be a part of the larger world. I don't have all the answers, I'm not going to pretend like I'm the expert to consult on that, but I certainly have my opinions on it, and in my opinion, these guys are everything that's right with rollerblading, and that's something I won't shy away from, that's something I won't back down on. I'm willing to double down on that all day, every day. We need more professionals that live up to the meaning of professionalism, and that's can you be a good showman? Can you be a good role model? Can you take on the responsibilities beyond just doing hard tricks, but being somebody that others will follow into a brighter, more prosperous future? And ultimately, rollerblading is what you make of it. It all starts with a conceptualization in the mind that we bring to a reality. What do you guys want rollerblading to be? It's a big question. One that this video attempts to explore, but one ultimately only each of you can answer on an individual basis. Anyway, guys, that's gonna do it for this episode. So thank you for watching this episode of Roll Minnesota, uh, Rolling Reactions. Again, I know it was a step away from the traditional formula that we've been following of looking at an individual skater to something that I felt was really important to bring in to the conversation. And ultimately, I want to make it into a conversation. What do you guys think about the current state of rollerblading, of inline skating, and about some of the ideas in that documentary? Um, is it worth taking a look at the materialism, the minimalism, and trying to make aggressive skating, inline skating, whatever you want to call it, more accessible to a larger audience, including others within the community? And how do we best go about doing that? Those are all big questions. Those are all things that we as an entire population of skaters need to address. Um, but I think it's something that's worth exploring. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today. I'm Butch Lehman of Roll Minnesota. Thanks for coming in. And uh, until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and get out there and do some rollerblading. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.